I love me some tag team wrestling. This has been particularly fruitful in 2023 as the division has been kicking all the hoo-ha. It's in a better shape than it has been for a while. This does mean we have quite the task ahead of us, but never forget, they're all winners for entertaining us every single week. But who are the best tag teams of the year? Let's find out. Number 10, The Acclaimed. The Acclaimed are right, you know. I do love them. Such a wonderful success story, given that Max Caster and Anthony Bowens were randomly paired together thanks to Tony Khan, and then one day had Billy Gunn thrown in there too. If you wrote that all down on paper, it sounds totally mad. Way back in January, they were the AEW Tag Team Champions too. Given their popularity, taking those championships off them in February still seems like an odd choice. You can't really argue where we went to, though. These three doubled down on trios action, and they won those belts too. I get that doesn't count as a tag team award, but Caster and Bowens are so damn good together, and they really used 2023 to underline who they are as a pairing. It's also wonderful to see how much they connect with the fans. I still think their future is very bright. Number nine, Sting and Darby Allen. So this is just nuts how is it still a thing? When these two were paired together, I don't think it was meant to grow into what it did, but just go and have a look at what they did this year. Aside from Sting having the time of his life, which is extra fitting given that he is retiring in 2024, you had that awesome tornado tag match at Wembley Stadium versus Christian Cage and Swerve Strickland. I mean, talk about the definition of fun. Darby has also brought the crazy out of the icon, and while that resulted in some terrifying moments, it's also pretty much underlined his legendary status. I think Alan has benefited from all this too and really when you put it in a nice neat little package they're just an absolute joy number eight imperium do you want some solid tag team wrestling here you go giovanni vici and ludwig kaiser are just so good as a duo especially because they have that no nonsense attitude i mean they do have to worry about gunther killing them but that's life you'll have a big austrian man that wants to behead us it's consistency that gets them here because they had great matches against kevin owens and Sami Zayn, alpha academy sheamus and drew mcintyre as well as diy they essentially became wwe's go-to team they must know. We also had some bizarre and therefore excellent story beats, including that video package for Kaiser, which in hindsight feels like it may have been an accident. A tag team title run has to be on the cards, and if treated correctly, it could be one we talk about for a long old time. Number seven, the Alpha Academy. So what a work in progress this has been. There was most definitely a time where Chad Gable and Otis were meant to be nothing more than a joke. That was fine. They were very entertaining. As soon as we let them loose, though, man, it got even better. Even the addition of Maxine Dupree was inspired, as you could see she was making a real effort to fit in. And that match they had with the Viking Raiders on Raw was excellent. Plus, it happened on a boat the most WWE sentence ever. They really are an example of how to make the most of your minutes, and they even used Chad's singles feud with Gunther to level up the whole group. as a proper all-for-one and one-for-all mentality. It means we go into 2024 with the Academy more than worthy of a tag team title run, and we should just do it. They never drop the ball. Number six, Aussie Open. The coolest thing about Aussie Open is that I don't have to recommend any single one match. You just pick one, and it will rule. That's what Mark Davis and Carl Fletcher do. It's also why they got signed to AEW, because they knew. And in 2023, they won the Ring of Honor and IWGP Tag Team titles. Fights against the Young Bucks and FTR were also sublime. And even their opener at All In did the job. They were there to make Adam Cole and MGF the best team ever, and they did. It always takes two to tango. If you have been watching Aussie Open since they burst onto the UK indie scene, you know the deal. And I cannot wait to see where they are in another 12 months. We're only just getting started, which kind of makes all this even more ridiculous. Number five, the guns. Austin and Colt and Gun just get it. They've been happy to send themselves up since day one, and as such became very entertaining. Also put them on people's radars as more than just bullies, kids. It wouldn't surprise me if all of this was planned out. 2023 saw them take their biggest step forward yet because while they kept the nonsense up, they also added a touch of the seriousness to the act and they started to fly. The Jordan Bullet Club Gold helped even further still and while they had a brief tag team title reign towards the start of the year, you can just tell there's more to come. It was almost like a testing ground. If they continue to work with the best, they'll continue to improve too. And I truly think when it does all click, they will continue the gun legacy, and then some. They also made me laugh a lot during our WrestleMania interview. And well, that counts for me. Number four, the Young Bucks. We always need to remember that we do not get pro wrestling as it is right now without Matt and Nick Jackson. 
We have done a ridiculous amount for the industry. They're also just the best in the ring, to the point, even when they don't have banner years, they're still putting on banger matches. I mean, they finished up that best of seven series against the Death Triangle back in January, killed it with Aussie Open, were part of Blood and Guts and Anarchy in the arena, plus continued their ever ongoing saga with FTR at All In. I swear, that's never going to get old. The fact they still work at the speed they do is mesmerizing as well, and their in-ring timing is second to none. I mean, we all think they're going to start slowing down at some point, and yet every year they prove that idea wrong. So you really can just find them at any point in any time and throw them in the ring and watch how good they are. I'm not sure there's that many other teams you can say that about. Number three, the Usos. I mean, where do we even start? 2023 was the best year for the Usos ever, and it goes way beyond matches. Their input into the Bloodline story was phenomenal, and the end result was the unthinkable. In 2024, they may not even be eligible for this list, as they continue to smash it as single stars. It has been so cool to see. Before they split, they were on fire too, which led them to the main event of WrestleMania Night 1, and they found themselves flying high with the LWO, Alpha Academy, the Street Profits, and even Braun Strowman and Ricochet. Their contribution at Money in the Bank versus Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa has to be considered a highlight of the year too, and who the flub knows what the future holds now. They rewrote the rule book over the last 12 months, and they're likely only going to get better. Number two, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. What a treat this was. Sadly, it ended in October as Kevin Owens was drafted to SmackDown, but the roller coaster KO and Sami Zayn took us on this year was excellent. What was even better was them reforming as a team, because for a good chunk of time, Sami was in the bloodline, as Kevin tried to explain why this was really, really dumb. It all changed in January, which led them to the main event of WrestleMania Night 1. And don't forget when they won the titles, it was wonderful. That is the whole point of that show. Their war with the Judgment Day was also super fun until it went Groundhog Day, and there was loads more that we could have done with Imperium. I'd have taken a three-month feud. I'm going to go as far to say it was the Usos and these two who really took the tag titles back to a prestigious point. Let's hope we can keep them there. It's in a much better state than it was. Number one, FTR. FTR decided that come 2023... They were just going to be everywhere. You forget this now because a wrestling year is awfully long, but they were tearing up in New Japan. You already mentioned match with the Bucks at Wembley. They made stars out of the guns and even had some right entertainment with Big Bill and Ricky Starks. Dex Harwood and Cash Wheeler also had a match of the year contender with Juice Robinson and Jay White on that summer episode of Collision. And really... They just don't put a foot wrong because they're too flubbing good. It all ties into the legacy FTR are trying to leave. And this has been another 12-month period where they've smashed another nail into the goodbye present. Good as we know they are now, they will be even more fondly remembered once they do hang it up. But let's hope that's not for ages. Because again, just to underline this, they are really, really, really something special. Do you have any other tag teams you think should have been mentioned in Tag Teams of the Year? Or maybe you want to do some movement with those numbers? Make sure you let us know in the comments below before you like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this with your eyes. Make sure you come follow us on social media at SimonMiller316 and WhatCultureWWE. And otherwise, go enjoy yourself today, my friends, because tomorrow may never come. Although that's somewhat terrifying... Just do whatever the fluff you want.